Hey everybody, Frank Marco here. I'm coming to you live from my studio in an undisclosed location somewhere near Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and I'm excited about this class which is called, ta-da, High Performance People Management. Now, I've been teaching this topic for many, many years, organizational behavior, and I love this topic. It is so eye-opening. Students love this topic, too. So my hope and prayer for you is not that you just have another class and some more information, but that your thinking and understanding about people and organizations is transformed, that you might become a more effective manager and leader in the context in which you're in. When you think about it, every day, <clears throat> excuse me, every day we work together with people in these things called organizations, don't we? It might be a school, it might be a business, it might be a nonprofit, it might be a military, it might be a government organization. No matter who you are, you are working together with other people in an organization. Now, I suppose there's some people that, you know, they're lone rangers and they live in caves and they don't work together with other people. But most of us normal people actually work together all the time with other people. And so understanding the dynamics of what happens when people get together is so critical. It's something we do all the day, uh, all, all day, every day, almost all every day. And we don't really think about it very much. And so this class is going to is going to peel back some of those hidden dynamics, some of those secrets, some of those mysterious, strange, unimaginable, unexplainable phenomena that happens when we get together with people. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got something in my throat today. So you're going to understand the dynamics of people working together in an organizational setting, both on an individual level, when we look at things like individual personality and motivation, on an interpersonal level, one-on-one, -on -one, when we look at things like conflict and uh, other things, when, on a group level, when we look at things like group dynamic and group think and teams and teamwork and group conflict and intergroup and intragroup conflict and team leadership. And then at the organizational level, when we look at how people try to get together as groups of groups. And when you think about an organization, what is it really? But it's a group of groups. And so, uh, and then the kind of higher strategic level, when we think about the entire organization as a unit and things like change management, change management and structure and how the organization itself is affected by and affects the larger organization that it is a part of. So I'm getting ahead of myself, but I want you to get excited about this topic because this really is a, a seminal, important topic in the overall curriculum and one that I think that you'll walk away from just feeling so much more enlightened and informed and capable uh, as a manager and as a leader yourself as you understand these concepts. So hang on for a really great class. Now, what I want to do primarily in this video is I want to explain to you a little bit about the class itself. I'm not going to get into the topic per se, but just about the class itself. Now, this is going to be an eight-week online class, right? Now, the university expects you to put in a lot of work for a three-credit graduate-level class that runs in only eight weeks. So the, so the information, the material, the assignments are going to come at you pretty fast and furious. And so look at the syllabus. It has the requirements for the work and what's going to be expected from you in terms of the workload in this class. Now, I got to tell you, you know, I, I, I'm a nice guy, but I'm also a pretty tough grader, too. And I expect a lot from my students. But... I also know that you guys have the capacity to do it because you've made it in the program and maybe you already have a class or two or five under your belt and you already have the ability to work at this level. So I have high expectations, but I, I, I already have faith in you guys because I've had a lot of APU students before. I know you guys are great. All right. So you can handle this class. You really can. Now, let me talk a little bit about the structure of the class. It's an online class. Uh, it will run week to week. And what we'll do is we'll start the week. Each week is I'll post an announcement. And the announcement will be, hey, you guys, here's what's going on this week. Here's some of the big things. Here's the big idea. Here's some of the assignments, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I'll do some interim announcements. Maybe, you know, if I run across a resource or want to clarify something for you. And then an end of the week announcement I'll post. Hey, good work. Don't forget to turn in this thing by the end of the week. <clears throat> now, each week we'll also post a couple of discussion threads. One are called... Faith integration. Now, you know that Azusa Pacific University is a Christian university, and so we like for our students to think about how our faith impacts the academic uh, and managerial topics that we're studying in the class. So it's not just academics, but it's faith development as well. So the faith integration post will allow you to think about the topic of the week in light of what we know and believe as believers and, and, and through our understanding of Scripture. 
So look forward to that each week. Some students really excel at this. They love it. They love to see how uh, matters they're studying in school are impacted by and impact scripture, not impact scripture, but how we're informed by scripture. And it's really interesting and exciting. Now, some of you might be thinking, I've never read the Bible before in my entire life. Well, that's okay. Uh, but this is going to be your opportunity to learn how to read the Bible and learn how to apply the Bible to things that you may have not have thought about. You may have thought the Bible is this esoteric, you know, strange, spiritual, philosophical book. Well, guess what? We're going to find out some things that are very practical and meaningful for your work as a manager, all right? So look forward to that. Now, the second type of discussion is just what we call the discussion. And this is where we're going to really engage the topics of the class uh, proper. We're gonna look at them more in depth, and most of them have to do with some sort of analysis, synthesis, or application. And as graduate students, that's what we do a lot of, really. I'm not really just looking to see that you know the concepts, but that you can actually do something with the concepts. You can think about the concepts in a sophisticated way. You can use them to solve real world problems in your own context, and your own understanding. And you're able to take those concepts and compare them to other concepts, right? So you're kind of building information, seeing how information relates to one another. So those are the two main discussion activities we're gonna have uh, each week, all right? So Monday morning, you can hit the ground running. Uh, the week will not open up until Monday morning, okay? So this isn't the kind of thing that you can kind of, you know, work on early ahead of time on your own schedule. My philosophy of online education is it's at a distance, but we are working on these things together as a class. So it's not an independent study where you kind of do this thing on your own. We are working together at, at the same clip at a distance. Now, for the you eager beavers who do want to get ahead, hey, read ahead. All the assignments, everything you really need to know is going to be in the syllabus, right? So there's nothing stopping you from working ahead, but I'm just not going to open up the portal the particular week and the discussion threads for you to work on because I don't want to show up on Monday morning and, hey, John's already done all his discussion threads. Well, that means that's sort of like you showing up to the classroom early, doing all your classroom, then leaving. We all show up. It's like, wow, I guess John was here. Wow, I wonder... You know, that was cool. You got here early. You know, you must have had something more important to do. No, so, uh, so anyhow, that's kind of the pace of the class. So it'll open up Monday morning. You'll have an opportunity to check out what's going on there, to look at the content. Uh, in terms of content, there's usually going to be a video. I'll, I'll usually provide a video. And I've, I've done a lot of work in this area already, so I have a lot of videos and content that I'm going to pull from. And you might say, boy, he looks a lot different there. You know, his hair was longer, or, you know, he had a goatee or something, or he actually shaved that day. Uh, he looked a lot better. He looked a lot younger. Well, whatever. You know, these aren't all like brand new, you know, fresh out of the box videos because I've done this class so much. I got a lot of content that I'm going to pull from. I might create some new stuff. I'm not sure. But that's what you're going to see, some content videos from me. And then you're also going to see some other experts in this particular area. So there's a lot of good people out here who've, uh, who can speak into this field. So we, we've tried to find you know, some good content from other places in terms of video and whatnot, plus links to websites, whatnot, some uh, PowerPoint slides, and a lot of other resources are going to help you in addition to the textbook, all right? So that's what you're going to see each week, right? Now, speaking of the textbook, we've got a great textbook for you. Uh, it's a relatively new book, and it's done by two outstanding professors from Azusa Pacific who you may know and love. If you've ever been on campus, you know Dr. Roxanne helm Stevens and uh, Dr. Daniel Kipley. Uh, the book is called Organizational Behavior Theory for High Performance Management. Now, uh, full disclosure, I've used a lot of textbooks before. This is my first time using this textbook, but I, I have to say I really enjoy it. I've, I've scanned it. I've read sections of it. I really like their approach. And really, the name says it all. Organizational Behavior Theory. It is really steeped in Theory, and you're going to learn a lot of theory in this class. You might be thinking, well, theory, that doesn't sound like a very practical thing. Well, a famous uh, scholar, Kurt Lewin, once said, there's nothing as practical as a good theory. Because once you understand why something is happening and you're able to make predictions based upon certain behavior, it's like a gold mine of information. So these theories are going to help you understand a lot. So don't be freaked out or wigged out by this idea of theory because you're going to learn a lot of it. And as graduate students, you really should become conversant in the world of theory. And so organizational behavior is rooted in a lot of other types of uh, uh, or, uh, behavioral sciences, right? So OB is a behavioral science. And so it's rooted in things like social psychology and interpersonal psychology and sociology and economics. And so you're going to kind of get little bits and pieces from a lot of different disciplines that help us understand people, right? So we're talking about people, we're talking about social systems and uh, those sorts of things. So you have to understand the theoretical underpinnings really to become 
you know, an expert expertise to have some good facility in it. But having said that, it's not all just theory, right? There's a lot of practical insights, practical management strategies, and things that will help you become an excellent uh, manager of people and understand organizational behavior really well. All right, so that's our primary textbook. Really, it's the only textbook, actually. Now, let me talk about the assignments and then we'll be done with this video here. There's two primary assignments in this class. The first one that's due earlier in the class is a, uh, a literature review. Now, some of you may have done a literature review before, but essentially what you're doing is you're picking a topic, a very narrow slice, a very narrowly focused topic, and you're reading everything you can get your hands on. You're reading some uh, historic, not historical, kind of classic written books about the topic, but really what you're looking for in a lit review uh, is is articles, journal articles. And again, if you're new in the program, you know, you're kind of just getting your feet wet in graduate studies, you got to become familiar with the library and with reading these, uh, these good academic, what are called peer-reviewed journal articles. So what you're going to do is, uh, is you're going to scan the library databases for the, all the articles you can get your hands on on that particular topic. So you might say, you know, I'm really interested in how, you know, diversity affects work teams and I want to see everything that's been written on that in the last, you know, 10 years. There's, that's a great topic and there's a lot on it. So you'll want to do some Google searches. You want to contact your librarian. Of course, you want to use the APU library database. They got a lot of good articles and it's a really high end library and you're going to learn a lot if you learn how to navigate that thing. All right. So the literature review and what I'm going to do is I'm going to scaffold that assignment out for you so that there's bits of it due along the way. So the first bit will be what is my topic, the next will be an annotated bibliography, what are the sources I'm finding, then there's going to be an outline, and then it's going to be the final uh, project, all right? So it's not just going to be one day, hey, hey guys, it's all due today. I'm going to help you kind of build this thing along the way. So that's why it, this class takes time, right? That's why it takes so much time because you each week you have to do a bit of it. So don't be that student that waits till the last minute because you're going to have a funky product and you're going to be stressed out when it comes to it. So, we're, so just keep up with the assignments and it's going to start to build itself, all right? That's the main, that's one main assignment. And the other main assignment, it's what's called the Organizational Diagnosis Project. And you get to take some of the concepts and the ideas of this class, many of the ideas, and you get to apply them to your own particular uh, work context or whatever organizational context you're in. So there's a couple tools where I believe we're using the Weezboard six box model to help you think about different areas, people, strategy, structure, reward systems, other helpful mechanisms. There's a lot of good models out there for help, helping us understand organizations, but this is one we're gonna use, I believe, for this class. So you're gonna do a diagnosis project and you're gonna take a good look at a particular organization or just a subset, like maybe your department or maybe a particular area that you're involved in or that you have access to, and you're gonna go through and you're gonna diagnose it using some of these tools and concepts from the class. So you're gonna walk away with a really uh, in-depth knowledge of that particular area, and you know, if you're already in management, this is gonna help you, or if you're not in management, this kind of thing, you can go to your boss and say, hey, I had to do this great project, and I think our team can learn a lot from this information that I, uh, that I did in my research. So it's going to be a very practical kind of thing as well. So you're going to apply that theory to your practical situation. That makes sense? I hope it does. All right. And that's pretty much the gist of the class. All right. You got it. We start on Monday. We end on Saturday. Uh, let me talk about discussion real quickly. I'm a big believer on getting in early, getting in, getting out. Uh, again, this isn't the kind of thing that you do on your own that you wait till the very end. So you see there's deadlines on the discussion. Faith, uh, faith integration is due on Tuesday. Main discussion is due on Wednesday. Follow up Thursday, follow up Friday. Saturday, you just kind of tie, any, tie up any loose ends. So really, I, I want to see the class kind of start early in the week. So even though there's no set time, really you have to manage your time and budget it so that throughout the week you're kind of participating uh, and we're done by the end. You don't get on there Saturday night and say, oh man, I got to do my discussion thread. Again, that's like the guy that comes into the class late and says, hey, y'all, where'd y'all go? I got something to say here. You know, listen to me. You know, you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that gal. You want to get an early feel on top of things and really leave the end of the week, like the weekend, uh, for, your, for your written work, for the parts of your project that you're working on, the diagnosis or the lit review, okay? All right, so that's my philosophy to the discussion and the flow of the week. Anyhow, that is it for now. You're going to hear a lot from me throughout this class. I hope you like this mug because you're going to see it a lot. And uh, the first thing you're going to do in this class is kind of introduce yourself. So make sure you go into the uh, getting to know each other thread. 
uh, post a little video of yourself. It doesn't have to be this long or this goofy, just maybe a minute or 90 seconds and introduce yourself. Say something about you know what you do uh, and maybe what you're looking forward to in this class, something like that. And then we'll respond to each other, respond to a couple other students, and we'll get to know each other. And then we'll jump right in week one on the first couple of topics, all right? So that's it. Blessings to y'all. I'm looking forward to working with you all. All of my contact information is in the syllabus, so reach out to me through email uh, or phone if you need to have a more in-depth conversation about anything, and I'm here to help you and glad to help you. All right, blessings to you, and we'll see you online.